Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you've been well. Tonight, I'm gonna be making a few videos. They're all videos that are gonna be answers to questions that I, I get asked quite a bit. Uh, so if you're new here, if you're not subscribed to the channel, uh, I do a lot of gear reviews, apparel, pants, jackets, whatever, uh, guns, shooting, trucks, all that kind of stuff. These next couple videos I'm going to be making are going to be answers to questions that I get when I post primarily pictures of myself out hiking. Uh, so I go hiking, I live out in Colorado quite a bit, I go hiking in all weather. Uh, you know, in Colorado recently I've been doing hiking in the snow and stuff. So I'll post pictures and people ask me, oh like, what boots do you recommend? What's that backpack? What jacket can you recommend? Things like that. And every time I post a photo like that, I kind of get blown up uh, in messages and emails and stuff like that. So easier for me just to answer those questions when there is enough questions on a certain topic to just make a video about it. So this video is gonna be about hiking boots, the boots that I recommend, the boots that I use. I, I, I've tried a lot of different boots. So I'll get into that in a second. If you're a fan of the channel, specifically wait till the end and I'll, I'll be talking about some updates and some feedback and some, some things that I have coming up exciting for the year. Also, if you're new here, the format, the structure of my reviews sometimes are like really nice production quality. Other times I'm sitting here at a desk just kind of talking podcast style. Uh, I don't typically cover specs, specific details of a thing. So if you're looking for that, I always link to the stuff I talk about in videos down below. These boots I got from Tactical Distributors, a company that I love, the best customer support in the business. So if you're looking for all things tactical, uh, go check that out. I have links down below again. So the format of my reviews are usually just talking from real world experience, real world use of these things, how they work for me specifically, how I use them. Not everyone's the same, not everyone's foot is the same size, for example. Not everyone is out in the same kind of climates that I am. So not necessarily a one size fits all kind of thing, but I'm gonna talk about my experience with this boot. So these are the 4D forces. So for those that don't know, Solomon makes some of their boots and some of their shoes and running shoes and and trail running shoes, things like that in editions called forces. A lot of times they'll have some minor different features. They won't have any reflective material. They'll be in darker kind of earthy tactical colors uh, and they're geared towards uh, the military, but also, you know, available to civilians as well. So if you're into those kind of colors or you don't care about the reflective or some of the other features of the shoe or boot make sense to you and how you're gonna use it, uh, then the forces are a good option versus the regular pair. The 4Ds, the Quest 4Ds, the Forces versions have a little bit different eyelets here. There's no hook part, so they can't snag on anything. Uh, obviously, like I mentioned earlier, the color, the non-reflective nature. These have kind of grooves for fast roping if you need to slide down. And I think, I think that's the only thing different between the Forces and the regular version. But I'll talk about the boot real quick. Uh, maybe some backstory. I typically, uh, a long time ago, and still really like keen hiking boots. I like, they're typically a little wider, uh, more comfortable. This is a pair of boots that I, I've used. Probably my most similar boots that I've used to the uh, Quests, actually. I forget the model, but these I got kind of keep to kick around, uh, kind of junkers. I have these boots people see a lot. These are Nike Meriwether's, I believe. Kind of more of a fashion boot, but have some okay features, but really, these I don't really like for doing any kind of serious hiking. Another pair of boots are these Under Armors, which look really cool, actually. They're an all right boot, but they're much more lightweight, not nearly as supportive, and kind of somewhat bridge the gap between like a shoe and a boot, I guess. Uh, I don't really love the fit of these, and they're just kind of, for a boot that's like doesn't have as much support and stuff, I'd rather just wear a trail runner for the most part. I have some other, like these are a dedicated snow boot really, so a little more insulation. These are by Columbia. But I found, I bought these because I was doing a lot of winter hiking, but I just don't really use them. I don't really like how kind of tall and stiff they are. I'll typically in the winter will almost always be wearing this boot with a pair of gaiters. So gaiters are the things that go over your ankle to keep out kind of water and snow and stuff like that to keep them from getting between your pants and your boot and down into here. So a pair of gaiters are recommended if you're gonna be doing any kind of water and or for me, primarily snow hiking. Uh, gaiters work well with these. Really they work well with any boot that's gonna 
come high enough to make sense for a gator. All right, these have these typical kind of ortholite insole that Solomon is famous for, as well as contra grip soles. The pattern here works well for a hiking boot, uh, is relatively grippy on all surfaces. It does pretty good on slick rock, though I really haven't found a boot that, or shoe for that matter, that really excels on slick, wet rock. It's just, it's a tricky thing. Uh, aside from like uh, felt bottomed, uh, like wading boots I found work well on slick rock obviously, but I'm not gonna hike in those long distance. Uh, but for all the environments that I find myself out here in uh, Colorado, they work really, really well. This boot is gonna be a very hot boot uh, for summer hiking. So not really a boot that I would recommend unless you want really sweaty feet in the summer. Uh, they are GTX, so they are waterproof. They do kind of have a booty here that will not allow water or dirt to leak in as long as it is below here or you're wearing something like a gator over the top. It does have a very protective thick um, front rubber toe cap here, not a steel toe or anything like that, but a protective rubber cap which will keep you from kind of stubbing your toes if you jam into a rock or tree stump or something by accident. I have kicked a few things uh, both unintentionally and intentionally to kind of test the boot uh, and it works out really well. It does have a more rigid kind of heel protector in the back here. Support is good. It is relatively flexible for a boot so you can run around with it and stuff. It's not going to be as flexible as something like uh, a speed cross which is another shoe I really recommend but it is going to be a little more flexible than kind of your traditional hardcore backpacking type boot. Um, a really happy medium for me and the stuff that I'm doing a lot of times. Uh, it does, does have really good ankle support. Uh, the laces and the shape of it really cinches your uh, ankle down. So I haven't experienced any blisters, even when these things were brand new. Haven't even experienced any hot spots, which is nice. There's no kind of pressure points in this boot. Uh, the toe area is a little thicker, uh, wider, I mean, than most of your standard Solomon type shoes, which I really like. I like the thicker foot area and kind of the wider toe area, so nothing in my foot feels cramped, and I can wear kind of thicker wool socks in these and be, be all right without having to go crazy in sizes. I kind of forget actually what size I wear. So here I'm wearing a 10 and a half in these. Uh, for reference, I wear a 10 and a half in most things and 11 in some things like the speed crosses I wear an 11. These are 10.5 and I find fit great. This loop right here that the lace goes through is a does have a locking mechanism. So when you pull it through, it can, so I'm trying to do this just by looking in the lens here. It will slide through obviously nice but then once you pull it forward, it locks in place and will no longer be able to loosen up. So basically when you're tightening boots, you can just tighten it, lock it in place, and none of this stuff is gonna move. When you're ready to take it off, slide this back, unlock it, let it down. None of these loops on the forces specifically can you put the lace in from the back and just kind of flip it through. They are laces that go fully through the loops like that. So that is the one of the main difference between the Forces version and the regular Quest 4D. And I don't know, I don't know what else you care about really that you can't read on the website. They're very comfortable, like I said, even from the first time I wore them, they don't require a ton of break-in. Uh, a really good balance of flexible, you can run in them and stiff enough to actually carry some weight on your shoulders and do longer treks and feel all right. So this is just the answer to the question that I get all the time, what is a hiking boot that you recommend because I do a fair amount of hiking and I do a fair amount of kind of running and gunning as well. So I guess I'm kind of a happy medium between an outdoorsman hiker type and a more tactical training type. Uh, and this is the boot that I can recommend. Not that long ago, I did a video on kind of the shoe, running shoe trail runner that I recommend, which is also a Solomon. I'm not sponsored by Solomon. I have no affiliation with Solomon. So the fact that I have two Solomon, uh, two of my favorite uh, kind of shoes that I wear for outdoor applications are Solomon's. That's, I'm not bought by them or anything. I wasn't paid anything to make this video. So just to be clear, it's a coincidence, I guess, kind of, that both of them are Solomon's, but also they just make great products, uh, good warranty, and I like the look of them as well because that is super important, the look of a boot. The Forces, I believe, come in 
this color burrow they come in a black and then they come in a lighter tan i forget what the tan is called uh, all of them are available from tactical distributors though uh, so yeah boot if you have any other questions feel free to ask me and i'll do my best to answer it but yeah just just wanted to answer that question and that's it if you found the video helpful informative any of that kind of stuff hit that thumbs up button thanks for watching and if you're a fan of the channel stick around and we'll talk about some channel stuff right now all right hey so in a couple of the last videos oh actually quick if you're still if you're not a fan of the channel and you're wondering what else i'm going to talk about oh so this is a hiking backpack that you probably see in my instagram posts and stuff i don't know if you've seen it in videos this is a vertex pack the edc ready bag which is a lightweight this isn't a backpack I'm taking backpacking. It doesn't have a hip strap or anything like that. This is kind of a lightweight, shorter hike, light, quick backpack. This is just kind of small, light, has nice pocket layout that I like for hiking. So just some, you know, miscellaneous items. I'll make a video about this bag and going through the whole thing maybe tonight and upload it soon. If not, I'll try to get to it in the next week or two. This is another question of a bag I get asked about a lot via what bag is that do you like it as well as like what's a good hiking backpack that kind of stuff so i'll get into that and a third garment i guess that i get asked about a lot is this shell uh, i'll do a review on this shell probably my favorite shell shell meaning it's not insulated it's waterproof it's a good outer layer in colorado i do a lot of layering so as far as a shell is convert can Cern, that Vertex, I think it's called the Integrity, is an awesome shell, especially if you're a concealed carrier. And I'll get into that in another video that I'll try and do tonight. Yes, so channel, channel updates. Things are good if you follow me on Instagram. If you don't follow me on Instagram and you do use Instagram, check me out. I'm just at Last Line of Defense, one word. Link to my Instagrams down below as well as Facebook, Patreon, all those other good things. What else? So Patreon's still good, still doing monthly giveaways. If you're interested in that, uh, anybody who is a Patreon on the first of the month uh, of the 556 level automatically gets entered for that giveaway. I don't know what it's going to be this month. Maybe it's going to be something sick. I don't know yet. Might be a surprise. Maybe I'll tell you later. Other stuff on the channel. I mentioned briefly before in another video, maybe my last video, that Warrior Poet uh, I talked to him and met him. We're like-minded individuals. He's a cool guy, ex-ranger, current firearms instructor. We got to chatting. I said, come out and do a course in Colorado. He said, I'll think about it. I'll, I'll see if there's an interest. I really want to. I want to come hang out. I want to come do a course, blah, blah, blah. So I'm getting him to come out. He agreed to it. We got to narrow down a range, a time, probably September-ish and yeah, he's coming out. So if you're into Warrior Poet, let me know down in the comments below. Also, this is important. If you uh, live in Colorado in the Denver area, preferably the greater Denver area within an hour, maybe two hour drive from Denver would be ideal. And you know of a range or you own a range or you have a private range or you have land that would be suitable for a range of, you know, 15 ish people, flat ground, berm, all that stuff. If you know of something that will fit the bill, let me know, because I want to bring good instructors through Colorado. If you live in Colorado, if you live near Colorado and you take training seriously, you'll know there's a serious lack of high quality firearms instructors out here. If you are a firearms instructor in Colorado, I, I apologize, nothing against you. You might be a great, great person, and I, I'm sorry I haven't taken a course with you yet, but I'm talking about kind of like the bigger name traveling instructors, those types of guys, they don't come through Colorado a lot, and a reason I talk to a lot of them, I'm friends with some of them, and the reason is because there just aren't any good hosts, there aren't any good ranges out here. So either if you see an opportunity to build a range, if you have a range, if you know of a range that isn't very well known, let me know, comment down below or email me, mike at llod.us. You can email me probably from some links on my YouTube as well, or go to llod.us, my website, and hit that contact form and contact me. Reach out to me. I want range for both bringing in instructors. I have the pool. I can bring in instructors. I can fill courses. If you're into that, let me know. I want to do it. I want to bring more training to Colorado. Uh, also, 
I don't have a personal range. It's hard for me to get out to public service land, public forest service land and film videos. Sometimes my spot is taken. I gotta find a backup spot that's taken. Anyway, it's becoming a pain in the butt for me to do it. So if you live near, so I'm out in the foothills, uh, conifer pine bailey area of Colorado, Morrison conifer pine bailey. If you live in that area or if you have land in that area and you wouldn't mind me coming and shooting on it, I can provide targets, I can clean up, I can do all kinds of stuff. Hey, I can give you some tips on shooting. Maybe you can give me some tips on shooting. If you have land available uh, to shoot, preferably 50 out to a few hundred yards would be sweet. Let me know, contact me again for that. Just private stuff, just me, maybe a few of my friends coming out and shooting once in a while. Uh, I'm looking for something. Maybe I'm looking to, into buying land as well if you have something for sale. But if you just have land and you wouldn't mind me coming and providing targets, I could leave them there. You could shoot them all you want anything let me know sorry that's kind of a personal request but really for the channel as well so ranges in colorado i'm very very curious about them secondly unrelated to everything i was talking about i am getting more into overlanding i was into off-roading big time in college i got a suzuki samurai funny right yeah suzuki samurai bone stock for like 1500 bucks and built it up from the ground up they have leaf springs by default they have tiny little tires i put on a full coil conversion coil swap eight inch lift sucker was on 35s change the transfer case gears headers exhaust everything you could do to a samurai for performance i did this thing was crazy and i was big time into wheeling a lot of my friends had trucks and toyotas and land cruisers and broncos and those kind of really cool vehicles so i was into off-roading for a while i go through a lot of phases motorcycles sports cars trucks suvs luxury cars whatever but now i'm back to truck mode got a tacoma you guys probably know about it i just Today, finally got it back from getting a lift installed. I'm gonna do a whole video on the lift, the components I have. I'm setting it up more for like an overlanding type rig, but it's still gonna be my daily driver, so nothing too crazy. But that's one thing I'm excited about. This will kind of tie in somewhat to my new relationship, somewhat new relationship with Fieldcraft Survival. If some of you might know them, they have a pretty good podcast. They're doing this thing called Fieldcraft Mobility, which maybe I'll explain in a video later. Anyways, they're big. They're just like me, except cooler. You know, they're formal, former uh, special forces type dudes. I'm just a regular dude. But they're into overlanding vehicles, off-roading, camping, survival, outdoor survival, mindset, medical training, and guns, obviously. So they're a really cool kind of company organization. Tribe is what they call it for me to finally be involved with. So there's some cool things. I don't have anything specifically planned with them, but some cool things coming up. Uh... YouTube specifically, I don't know, I'm not, a, I'm not a great YouTuber. So YouTube collaborations, you guys always ask me to do. The best way, if you want me to do a collaboration with somebody, oops, hang on a second. If you want me to do a collaboration with somebody, let me know yeah, in the comments below, but let them know as well. Because if they are hearing, if they're getting blown up uh, for requests for me to do a video or a collaboration with them, they might not know me. I'm not a huge YouTuber. I'm, you know, under 100,000. And any YouTuber that's under 100,000 is kind of like, I don't know. I think the bigger YouTubers don't even don't even take note of them. So if you want me to collab with somebody, especially somebody bigger than me, then comment on their videos all the time, flood them, let them know who I am, and that way I'll show up on their radar and that stuff might be able to happen for those that are into those collab type things. Lots of other stuff, man. I have so many cool gun builds. Uh, Vertex and Premier sent out a panel and a pack, a commuter for me to shoot up, test it out because I want to do a review of the commuter, but I thought it would be cool to do a shoot 'em up video. So I'm doing that in the next few weeks. Also, <laughs> for that video, Magnum Research sent out a 50 caliber Desert Eagle. I kind of requested it just because I wanted to shoot some armor with a 50. Uh, I've shot these a few times in the past, never owned one. Though. So kind of excited about this gun. It is sick. This is the new L6 version with the built-in muzzle brake here at the end. If you've never shot or held one of these, man, these things are beastly. So I probably will do like a full-on review of this gun specifically, but kind of one of the reasons I got it was uh, to shoot up some bulletproof armor. Another thing is I have a couple polymer 80 builds. This is one 
that was stippled up by Risen Gunworks. I have a slide for this. This is a Southwest Precision slide. This isn't really a review of the slide, but it's a sick, like knurled slide with a blacklist barrel. I'm gonna be putting this all together soon. Not gonna be building it on YouTube, don't worry. But on a related note, I finally got a hold of someone over at Full 30, thanks to Mike, Mr. Guns and Gear. Put me in contact with someone over there. They are making me an account, so I will start uploading on Full 30 as well. So there I can do gun builds and stuff that I can't do on YouTube. So when I have an account over there set up and maybe my first video, I'll announce it over here. Everything else is rocking, man. Life is good. Everything is awesome. Hope you're doing great. Yeah, as always, comment down below. Let me know how you like the video. Let me know what you're looking for in the future. Let me know what you're looking forward to that I have already announced that I'm gonna do. And let me know maybe what you wanna see that I haven't talked about yet on the channel. Always like recommendations. All right, guys, this short little boot review now turned into a very long one, and I'm sorry about that. But just, just rock on, take care, like the video, hit subscribe, comment down below, peace.